A research proposal is a summary document in which you propose the research you want to do. It's used to assess whether your work is worthy of a PhD research and thus is very important in the application process. In this video, I'm going to break it down into seven easy steps to help you write the most effective proposal in no time. If you're new to the channel, I'm Patrick, a PhD student at Oxford, and in this series, I share the best study tips and hacks that I've been using myself. Right, let's do this. The title should give a clear indication of what you are trying to do. This should include clear words and terminologies such that when someone sees your research proposal for the first time and reads the title, they know immediately what the main gist of the proposal is. Start with the draft title, but honestly don't worry about this too much at the start because once you finish writing the body of your research proposal, you will automatically refine the title. An abstract is an extremely concise summary of the problem you are addressing, what it is, how you're going to address it, and what the potential significance of your work is in the bigger picture. The abstract is very short, aim for approximately 100 words. In this section, you want to outline what you want to do and why you want to do it, i.e. your true motivations, and you want to give a brief literature review. The idea is that, after they finish reading this part of the proposal, the reader knows exactly what valid points you want to address and your positioning in the broader literature. Emphasize towards the end what the significance is by doing this work that you are proposing. Here are some questions that may help guide your brief literature review. What research has already been done in this area? What is currently known about the problem? What is currently missing knowledge? What are the key theories, debates and controversies? What new insights will your research contribute to you? What is the significance and implication of your work? One thing to add, this is different from a formal literature review which goes in much greater depth, but I will make a separate video on this in the future. Formulate very clearly what exact questions you are looking to answer through your research. This links back to the previous section on the literature review. If you have outlined the problems and positioned yourself appropriately in the literature, then the research question is a natural consequence of that. As a point of reference, there should be one big question that you are addressing and many sub-questions that feed into that one big question. This section is the most important part of your proposal. Now that the reader knows your positioning and questions you want to address, here you want to clearly explain how you're going to do it and achieve your research aims. Another way to think about it is this. You might know what's going on in the field and know exactly what the problems are, but if you cannot clearly demonstrate that this is one realistic way of solving that problem, then there's no point in doing your research, let alone fund it. I want to highlight one important thing. No matter what your research proposal is about, when you write the research methodology section, just ask yourself, why do I want to do it this way and not another way? And is this the only way? You should emphasize on the drawbacks or potential challenges of your proposed methods. Obviously, you want the advantages to outweigh the disadvantages, but in this way, the reader knows that you are fully aware of the various aspects of your potential work. Towards the end of this section, emphasize the significance of your work and talk about how your work is original and makes a contribution towards the current knowledge in your field. Here are some questions that may help guide you, and some are applicable to certain fields. What are the most appropriate research methods and why? What are the pros and cons of your particular approach? What alternative methods have you considered and why have you discarded them? If you work with data, how will you choose your samples? What statistical analyses will you use for your work and why? How will the findings be validated? How will the hypothesis be tested? Are there any ethical issues and if so, how will these be addressed? What will you do if you don't get the results with your methods? Outline the various stages and corresponding timelines during your research. Each year of the PhD should have specific goals. For instance, depending on the what field you are in, in your first year you might do some exploratory work or work on a proof of concept. In your second and third year, you might expand on this work, build a fully fledged out model or algorithm and apply to other various cases, do some extra analyses, etc. Remember, your proposed time schedule is not set in stone. You may create an unexpectedly good result such that it shifts your entire project's focus into a specific direction. Equally, your model could work against what you predict and you have to figure out how to find another way to do what you want to achieve. End with a concise and informative conclusion. Some reviewers will actually start by reading the conclusion first. Give a list of references to the literature papers, 
that you have studied and discussed within your research proposal. These are the papers that form the basis of your literature review, the research questions and the proposed methods. A research proposal is used to assess whether your work is worthy of a PhD research, thus is very important in the application process, but it is just a starting point. Your ideas will naturally evolve as you make progress in your research. Disclaimer though, this is not the only way to write a research proposal, but one that I have seen in the past that was successful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something from this video, please like, subscribe and share to your friends who are also applying for grad school. Comment down below what study tips you want to explore and I will try to answer them in future videos. Thank you.